They said it wouldn't happen, the North American Trade Union, but beginning construction on the rail lines to connect it together, India rainfall pattern changing, which will also affect Asia. So we got three continents changing. What's going to happen to all of us? The time has come. The connection of the North American Trade Union with the South American Trade Union happening now. These railroads being put in. Always thought it could be. Never was until right now. Just like cryptocurrency. Could have done these rail lines a long time ago. Why put it off until now? The economy is shifting. Why now? Look how many rail lines they're anticipating. Now, this is going to open a huge amount of trade between North and South America, Central America right in the middle. The middlemen, no less, are going to be compensated for all that. And factoid here, fun fact for the party folk, tomatoes are actually native to the Americas. This means that there was no Italian tomato sauce until the 16th century or the 1500s. Strange fact, I will agree it is. And I was shocked. The U.S. dollar is worth 8.9% less than it was at the beginning of the year. Oh, my. That means inflation plus loss of purchasing power. The nasty double whammy there. I thought I was misreading the chart. Get out my glasses. Lo and behold, in pink, it shows the same. It just makes you wonder with all the collapsing economies going on around the world, all these strange things are happening in unison as if a, a domino has started in motion in the next and the next and the next. Oh, wait, we saw that in 2007 and 8 also. Getting precarious here. Let's look around the world and see who's consuming tea or coffee. Changed across the planet, rainfall patterns shifting, coffee going to all-time highs. Tea cultivated, but it needs rainfall too. And think about this being people's daily drinks as they go through morning, afternoon, evening. And how did I get to this story? Because I was looking at tea. India. Highest pre-monsoon rains in 125 years hit Karnataka. Nearly three times the monthly average. So that grabs my... So that'll grab my attention. Something that's a 3x. So we're looking for a lot of increasing... Uh, multiples of storm size, hail size, rainfalls, etc. Moving forward, depleting magnetic field, obviously things are going to behave differently. There's going to be bunch ups in the atmosphere and they call that rivers from the sky when it pours outward. It's really colliding in on itself in different layers of the atmosphere. And this is why we're seeing so much, I guess, heavier storms is a good way to put it. Things are trying to realign, but that's a lot of, you know, real estate up there to, to try to smooth out. And it just isn't right now. So you know I like to go more long duration cycles when I'm looking for the research. So I'm bringing you way back in ancient history in Karnataka. They've seen some cycles come and go. Drought cycles, flood cycle. Yep, they, this has been here for thousands of years. You know they witnessed it. This place is very ancient. Belur and Hampi. And if I was not knowing where the images were from, I would think this was from somewhere in Petra. So similar. And as we go through the region lost in time here, Gol Gumbaz looks like an energy generator to me, but that's just maybe it's late night while I'm recording. And Bijapur, not known for the biggest domes in India, everybody's looked at the Taj Mahal. Well, that's smaller in comparison to what we see here. There's a well-known saying on Wall Street, sell in May and go away. This year, even the big players are echoing that sentiment. Bank of America and UBS are both urging caution, advising investors to sell the rally. Markets are still struggling to regain their footing. We've seen over $11 trillion in wealth erased from U.S. equities. And the broader economic outlook remains uncertain. Historically, periods like this have often led to increases in central bank intervention which more often than not means more money printing and a weaker dollar. In uncertain environments, one asset has shown remarkable resilience over thousands of years, physical gold. And Goldman Sachs is projecting a possible rise to $4,000 an ounce by 2026. If you're looking for stability in turbulent times, owning physical gold can offer a level of diversification and protection that paper assets simply can't. 
Here's the next step. Call Monetary Gold at 1-888-570-2636. Ask how you can hold gold in a tax advantage IRA and what incentives they have today. Again, that's 1-888-570-2636. And tell them ADAPT2030 sent you. And when you look at this, it looks out of time. It looks very different, like one cycle in the past that survived, this one remnant here. And this entire area, stonework on the lakes, they got dams there. And if you look straight in the middle of the picture, sort of Angkor-ish on the cliffside carved in there, Angkor Wat to be specific. And what's one thing that goes throughout history? I don't care if it was Hampi 2,500 years ago or today. The gold coinage of the day is still spendable today, although there'd be a premium on it for the antique. But you can still spend those gold coins. That is one thing that holds value. Through the eons, gold coins and coins that can be spent. Like you could go into a time machine and bring those up and you could spend those, trade them in and get what we call cash for that today from something produced 2,500 years ago. That's another thing that is consistent in history. But we're not going to go back 2,500 years. We're going to try back to 600 AD. I wish we could have captured that 535 AD period, but this is the best I could do. Because these are the paper titles you're looking for here. Something like this. 900-year record of Indian summer monsoon. Geophysical research letter has a lot of these reports. Now, it's real simple to look at. Green is more flood, more water, more rainfall. That brown at the bottom, droughts. And then where you see all those stars, droughts are mega drought. And look at right in there, the 1400s. That's the wolf minimum. And then spore minimum, and then after that, the Dalton minimum. So you're going to go further back in time than just the, the most recent in here. But look at the cascading effect that would have of massive drought for multiple decades, no less. That would have meant just less food production, as we're seeing. And, you know, India is getting wetter also in many an area. And then if you look at the top, it pulls that out from 1350 to about 1510 or 1500 there. Completely dry, and then it swung to the other direction, incredibly wet, floods. You can't see subgrouping around 1000 AD. That would have been a very abundant, prosperous time. Look how much consistent rainfall, like the amount of crops growing at that long duration green wet cycle would have been incredible. And then you look, you can see those three pulses of wet and incredible agriculture cycles 1430, 1470, that era right there. And put that in perspective, you know, the food production of the time would have been the value of the society's worth in terms of excess like we have today for trading, uh, bartering for better items or starting those trade routes. You know, food goes away, your society goes away. But here, that would have been a very abundant time to be around for those periods. So, you know, you got to wonder on the... Uh, you know, 80 year cycle that we go through uh, Strauss and Howe's fourth turning. I'm wondering where those productive cycles would have been on the fourth turning line compared to the drought cycles like the mega drought cycle from what uh, 1350 right in that beginning of 1370. Like where would it have been on fourth turning cycle for that 20 year iteration plugged into that? There's all these different combinations of cycles that you can look at and then you can see how society responded and if you know it's going to get drier or wetter in an area that's going to affect something, then you can also see how civilization might be affected or the very fabric that holds everything together. And right around the 1500s also, the Mir John Fort, same exact area in Karnatka. This is becoming like a crowded parking lot here, this place. You got all the moguls, you have more of the trade routes along the coastal areas. So identify it for you on the map here, Karnatka. That's why I said coastal, you know, seafaring trade as well. Anywhere that dark blue is, that's pretty much sea level and valleys going right into before the uh, elevation starts rising up. So you can see big coastal community. Take that back a several thousand years. Like what kind of trading would be done in that low coastal area? So a quick memory refresh here. 600 AD to 1500. We covered that chart already, but I wanted to show you linear. So the next time frame I could find was 1870. 
So from 1500, there's a gap there until 1870. Now, it's weird that the, it's the opposite. The colors should be opposite here. Floods should be green and droughts should be red. But if it goes above that zero point line, that's floods. If it's below it, it's drought. Now, just a simple observation, which one are there more of? And without the coloration and just like straight filter, this is what it looks like. 1901 to 2003. Looks like a lot heavier in both directions. The real standout on the chart there is 1919, that 1916, 1917. Floods, 1919 is dry out. So it flips in just a couple years. Notice how quickly it flipped from extreme floods to extreme drought in just that one go around in a couple of years. And I think the information is solid because I got it off trends in rainfall. And this is an older report from 2007 that was using these rain gauges right here to uh, collect the data. And Karnaka is pretty heavily uh, populated down there with the rain gauge stations. And they're bringing it even a sliver further, 1960 until 2020, a little bit closer. Look, those trends are definitely increasing. Then I stumbled across a couple reports where it linked the Indian monsoon with East Asia agriculture production. There's like equivalent there. So if it gets wetter there, it's going to get wetter over in Eastern Asia. So again, you can see these things are tied together around the world. Then we got the North American trade routes just about to blast through all Central America and connect everything. So we can start to see these continents are definitely interconnected in more ways than one. But this place has been on the trade routes forever. Look how ancient this is. Still, this is a modern building in comparison. And does this look like it was built in the 600s? I mean, it looks much older to me. I'm just you know, thinking about that. But again, back to the coinage. Look at the sun, the moons, the stars. They even had the silver coinage in this era here. It was very... Well documented on how much trade swung up or how much trade diminished based on, well, I'm going to say it's the rain pattern after you look at it all together, but still the coinage, how important was it to know about sun, the solar activity, and also star moon patterns. That looks like a zeta pinch right in the middle there as well, referencing the sun. But this also looks far older in time comparatively to those other, what you see, red sandstone buildings. This is a very different. You can almost feel it being different. And remember, if you get locked in an ancient building, you can use just this quick fix here to get yourself out of it. And that's the way it's always been. These changes are time immemorial, but they're all culminating right now. There's a big stack of them happening right this second. So what could you use that has been used in the past to also provide safety moving into the future? Seeds will be another one. TrueLeafMarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. That link's in the description box below. Every purchase you make helps support the channel, bringing you more info just like this. And please help us. Go over to TikTok and subscribe. We need 5,000 people so we can start broadcasting live. We're like 4,200. Please go over there. Civilization Cycle, so we can hit 5,000. We can go live broadcasting on TikTok. And thank you for your help. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.